your site says your food shouldn't be more well-traveled than you are. And for me, there were a couple of reasons that hit home. I know as a nutritionist that when your food travels, it starts to lose nutrients. The moment something is harvested, it starts to lose nutrients from there. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Heart Leader Podcast, where our heart and our mind align. I'm your host, Amber, and today I am joined by Greg Crafter. He is a firm believer that fresh, sustainable food should be available for everyone. So he's created a system where you can do exactly that. So Greg, really thank you for being here, for being willing to share the information that you've acquired and tell us how we can take like a corner back here where I have this thing that isn't even necessary and I could grow food for my entire family. So can you share with us a little bit about that? Just like. Sure, sure. Well, before I do that, Amber, let me Thank you for having me on your podcast. I, I really appreciate it. You know, we met a couple of weeks ago, did another, uh, I guess, podcast or meeting or Zoom meeting. And, and from there, I listened to some of the conversation that you shared with the group. And uh, it was it was inspiring to hear that. And uh, here we are. So I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. Likewise, everything that we discussed in that podcast, just let me know that you are a heart leader through and through. So I was very grateful when you said, yes, I'll step in and and share what we're doing with the community. So that's why I'm here to dive in and just, we have such a short time together and everything I've learned about you through your podcast and your site like I just want to get in there and absorb it all. Let's let's jump in. I'll I'll share what I can. <laughs> <laughs> You'd asked about uh, the grow block, and you know, just a brief story how that came about. You know, I've always been a gardener. I've always enjoyed growing something. You know, anything, and I got that from a parent. And you know, some years ago, I, I was frustrated, of course, about how I couldn't always grow the favorite foods that I enjoyed and everything was seasonal based on where you lived and the and it, it was just frustrating. And I researched and researched and came across hydroponics. And I learned hydroponics. I spent years, you know, trying to figure it out. And once I did that, you know, I thought, you know, this is an opportunity for not just me to benefit from it why not share with others that can also benefit from it? And it, it's one thing led to another and it started, you know, with me just sharing the food with my neighbors and friends and whomever else that would take food from me that I grew hydroponically out of my laundry room. And from there, it went to a, a backyard shed, a very small backyard shed. And I just continued to do it because not only did I love it, more so I love the fact that this was something that other people enjoyed too. And I was, I was like, man, let's figure out how we can do this even on a larger scale. Yeah. Um, so we, we moved into a warehouse where I took my entire operations in my small backyard shed and we kind of scaled it and started growing in a warehouse. I live in Atlanta and we just started supplying local restaurants with fresh herbs, you know, just stuff that I didn't. Honestly speaking, I was like, you know, I think it's OK product and others thought it was great product. But it dawned on me the fact that not only is it good, but it's benefiting the environment, it's benefiting people, it's help establishing relationships, all the things that I'm personally uh, attached to, it was checking off all those boxes. And so I was like, all right, well, let's figure out how do we make this even closer? How can we get fresh food even that much closer to people? By that time, the pandemic had pretty much impacted all of our lives and the customers that I had restaurant wise went away instantly, you know, the next day almost. And, you know, I was stuck with all this product. And so it 
forced me, like a lot of us, to shift gears and figure out how do we pivot? And at that point, I was like, wow, why don't we take everything that we're doing in the farm and make it a small unit to where people can grow just like what we're doing in the farm in their own homes or offices or wherever they are. And that's how the grow block became what it is. Well, yeah, it took some years to get it to where it is now, but (laughs) that was the idea behind it. Wow. For anyone who doesn't know what hydroponics is, can you just give us a base lesson over how someone would grow hydroponically? Uh, So hydroponics in its very simple form is the method of growing plants without dirt or soil. Uh, The nutrients that are in the water that are fed to the plants and the plant roots they have a water-based nutrient fertilizer that goes directly into the plant root system without having to pass any type of dirt or, or soil. And that, in that simple form, that's what hydroponics is. Okay. So someone who would get a grow block wouldn't have to worry about having dirt or soil in their home. It's something that you set up and the nutrients are fed to the plants just from the water and the system that you've created. Is is that what I understand? That's exactly it, Amber. There is a, a four gallon reservoir in the bottom of the unit. And in that reservoir is where the water is held and the nutrients is held and it's a fully automated system. The lights are you know, set to come on when they, when you want them on and the pump feeds the pumps and nutrients to the tops of the towers where they then feed the plants in each of the ports and the cycle just repeats itself. It sounds very basic and we designed it that way. Yeah. Well, when you get into it, it's not as basic as all of that because you have to make sure you have filters and all of the things that you as an engineer made certain we're well taken care of. So, but for someone at home who's looking to grow plants like myself, I had indoor gardens like beds so that I could set it up in front of my windows and grow produce. But then you suddenly find that having dirt in your home to grow (laughs) fruits and vegetables doesn't always yield what you're looking for because (laughs) you're sitting here at work and you're typing and you're like, huh. I smell that. That's that's a fertilizer in my dirt. I'm not sure that's really what I was looking for. So hydroponics, even if you love gardening and you want to do it all year long, it sounds like it takes care of a lot of that. Is that correct? It does. And uh, the other thing that, you know, the, the hydroponics allows you to do is use less water. You know, a lot of times when we grow traditionally, and it's not a knock at all on you know gardening or farming traditionally, but a lot of that water gets absorbed into the dirt in addition to the plant roots. You're using a lot more water, uh, but with hydroponics, you use 95% up to 95% less water than you would in just traditional gardening. And that's, you know, that's one benefit. Another is the fact that you could just grow in a different medium and grow a lot more food without the issues like bacteria and, you know, things that are soil born in terms of, um, you know, bacteria and germs and stuff like that. It's eliminated with hydroponics. Yeah. See, that's incredible. Now, I know we talked a little bit about food insecurity. And that's an area that's really near and dear to us. We do a lot of, you know, getting out into the community and assisting, at least in our immediate area, with food insecurity. How do you see something like the grow block and hydroponics helping in that area with the rate at which you can produce food? That's a really good question, Amber. And it was a question I was posed 
when I was first trying to figure out, you know, we're nothing's new about hydroponics. We're not the only supplier or company that makes a system like this. However, we were from day one thinking about true sustainability. You know, how can someone feed themselves and their family in a way where it's not a weekend project or it's just not another cute device or it's just not another hobby per se. And it took a lot of thought around doing it because we were like, we need to make it easy for people to one, understand, two, to operate, and then repeat that process. You know, we've all heard the saying, you know, give a man a fish and they'll eat for a day. But if you teach them how to fish, they'll eat forever. And that's, that's very true. And that's something that I see that as we educate people in such as a very small space, but with a system that you can put inside your home, you truly can learn how to not only feed your family and feed yourself sustainably, but now you're being educated on the proper types of food that benefit you health wise. And it's a domino effect from there. Now you're living better, you're eating better, mentally you're stronger, you know, you're you're going to the doctor less. Now you're incorporating exercise and you're taking care of your body. And if we can play a small part in that, I call it life lifestyle changes. You know, if we can play a small part in that, then that's the fulfillment that I get behind what we're doing and our mission with Roblox. And I love that because it starts at home, right? Within each of us feeling better. And then our families feel better. But you can also grow enough if you learn how to do hydroponics and you have a good system to start sharing that with your community so that the community also begins to have enough because maybe your neighbor doesn't have a hydroponic system. But if you're producing enough that you and your family have an abundance, then you can share it. And now all of a sudden, others have the food that is just excess for you, but they'll certainly take the excess that you have. And then they might wonder, okay, so how could I do a system like this? And it begins to become a ripple effect. And when I was reading through your website, that's one of the things that I really came to understand is that ripple effect that we can have. And so. I was grateful. No, that that's exactly right. And if you that's where our name came from. You know, we want to grow our block, our community, you know, our street, our neighborhood, and that's why we call the system Grow Blocks cuz that's exactly what we want to do is share food, grow food, share food, you know, create that local ecosystem and you don't have to start big. You can start with yourself and as you very clearly described, you know, it starts from there. Absolutely. Another thing that was on your site, and we talked about this in the other podcast, it really captured my attention. And that's your site says your food shouldn't be more well-traveled than you are. And for me, there were a couple of reasons that hit home. I know as a nutritionist that when your food travels, it starts to lose nutrients. The moment something is harvested, it starts to lose nutrients from there. But we also have all of the environmental impact from just trucking it. So can you speak to that and how the systems you're creating can just make an impact in that area? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you think about it, From farm to plate, the average food that gets harvested at farm travels on average 1,500 miles. And that's not just by truck, that's by boat, that's by plane. And 85, 87% of it is imported from other countries into just the US, the food, the, the fresh foods that we eat. And you think about all of the gas emissions, you know, the amount of 
impact that has on the environment just by travel. We haven't even talked, and you, you hit on it as well, on the nutritional content that's lost, just the impact from what travel with food does to the environment. And that's a lot. So we thought about it was like, man, your food shouldn't shouldn't be more well traveled than you are. You know, it should be as local as possible for a plethora of reasons, you know, environmental responsibility, nutrient content, you know, having the most nutritional food available at the closest point as you can get it from the source. Yeah, I don't think you can get closer than the corner of your own home. <laughs> and that was our that was our design. That was the reason we we came up with that. And, and we wanted that to be the case. Yeah. And you know what's on it. I mean, let's be completely honest, even when something says organic, and this was an eye opener for me, just because it says organic does not mean that there aren't things that have been sprayed or placed upon it. And so with the system that you have, does it require herbicides, pesticides, anything like that? No, not at all. Not at all. Another good point. You know exactly where your food is coming from. You walk past the food that you're growing every single day. You understand how it's being grown, how it's grown. You understand the nutrients and the minerals that are in it. You know, our fertilizer, it's a proprietary mixture that we make ourselves, but we vet it the suppliers. We share the information with people so that they know everything that they're getting involved in. You have it. You understand it. And it makes you feel good because you know it's safe. So one of the questions I do have when it comes to the seeds and planting in one of these grow blocks, is that difficult? Is it something where I have to get the seeds only from you? So here I am in Arizona and I have to contact Greg all the way in Atlanta, Georgia, or our audience is international. So if they're in France, do they have to get a hold of you or can they get seeds from anywhere? So the way our grow blocks work is we take care of that even for you. You're yeah. not, again, you're you're not planting. We're not giving you seeds with pods. A lot of our competitors will do that. And the reason that is the delay, if you think about it, you plant a seed day one in a week's time it germinates. In three weeks time, it's now a seedling. In two months, it's ready for harvest. So we, out of those eight weeks of the two months, we take the six weeks away from you and do it ourselves from our farm. So we're providing six week old plants and we're shipping those in a box with our nutrients to you directly to where you're just plugging the plants in the pods. And within one to two weeks, you're ready to harvest. That's phenomenal. So you set people up for success. That's right. That's exactly right. I've had a customer tell me, Greg, you know, the system is quite boring. And I'm like, exactly. It should be. You know, if you think about it, we treat it like an appliance, you know, a washing machine. It does its job. You put your clothes in, you put your laundry detergent in, press a button, you're washing clothes. And that's it. And our growth block is designed to do that as well, you know. Put your plants in, add the water, add the nutrients, and watch it grow. Well, there's no worse feeling than getting all excited. You get your system in, you plant it, and nothing happens. And you feel like, okay, I have the worst brown thumb ever. I just spent money on this system. And it has nothing to do with you or anything like that. So you've just taken that completely out of the equation is what it sounds like. That's exactly right. And the reason we do that is not to limit you from the enjoyment of growing and gardening, but we want you to feel successful because we know weeks and months and years down the line, it's more than just you being a successful gardener. It's part of that lifestyle change that I mentioned. And if you feel successful in the beginning, then you'll want to continue it. And that's why we want to ensure the success of everyone that has a grow block 
that they're they're successful with it. The plants are growing. They understand. They get the education behind the types of plants that they're choosing to put in it. And there's there's no failure. I love it. Now, I've explored your site completely. But if somebody who's listening right now wants to explore more about just the system and hydroponics, we like to let people know throughout the entire podcast, how can they get a hold of one of these systems or learn more about produce? Uh, well, you can go to our uh, website or we're on all social media platforms, Produced for All. That's our website, produceforall.com. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook. Twitter, TikTok, all of our handles are the same, Produce for All. We have all of the information there. We try to educate as much as we possibly can. That's a big part of our mission as well. And if we don't answer a question that you have, I love to answer questions directly. So feel free to reach out. I'm always available and I love questions. So I'm always available to share my knowledge to help others understand how they can benefit themselves and their families. Yeah, there's a lot out there. I got schooled and this is some of my background. So I was like, oh, I, I really love this. Now, I also learned this is not where you started. I'm going to ask if you're willing to get a little bit personal since transparency is our theme for the month and talk about how you even got into this in the first place. You touched on it. But you weren't always, you were a gardener, but not like in your career. You had another career before you jumped into this. Are you willing to talk about that? You're absolutely right, Amber. I, I, I did. I had a very quite successful career, if you want to measure it. I spent 23 years in corporate, starting as an engineer and then the you know, sales manager and director of sales and different you know, uh, businesses and corporations, I traveled a lot and there was a lack of fulfillment, you know, people measure success in different ways. And it does, it didn't resonate with me that what I was doing was fulfilling. And, you know, I had a heart to heart with myself and my wife and just kind of looked at, you know, what is it? What's my purpose? Why am I here? What am I doing? you know, being as successful as I am receiving accolades or whatever the case, it didn't feel like it. And the reason it didn't feel like it, um, I'll share with you even further, you know, being transparent, I'm a people person and I care about what matters most in life. And for me, it's people and plants. <laughs> and so I had the plant part down, but it was how can I connect with people in my current job I wasn't doing it. I'm like, man, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, how was I impacting other people's lives and sharing? You know, it just wasn't enough. So that was a transition that I made. I had been gardening and doing it while I was still working a full time job. And it wasn't until maybe five years ago that I say, okay, it's time to create a plan to transition out of what I'm doing into what I believe my purpose is in life. And I was fortunate to find what my purpose is at this point in life. And it, I couldn't have made a better decision at the right time. Well, thank you for being brave enough to do that. I know it's not an easy step. <laughs> But I feel like many people are going to benefit from that decision. And so I personally am very grateful that you did what you did. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I know as I went through and I was studying, you know, I always like to learn so much about the people that are going to be on the show. And when I studied and listen to your podcast. And I would like to dive into that a little bit here in just a few minutes. But some of the things you talk about are like food deserts and what those are and why we should care about things like the derailment that occurred in Ohio and the toxic spill that happened. And you help our community understand 
why if there are food deserts and places that don't have food, it matters to everyone. Why if there's a toxic chemical spill and it gets into the rivers and it's set on fire and the chemicals get into the air, it matters to everyone. Not that, that we should cast blame on people and start doing all this finger pointing, but because it matters. Can you share a little bit more about that? No, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, whether, whether we know it or not, it does matter because we're, we're connected. We're all connected in some capacity and we should do a better job if, if, if we want to talk about on a personal level humanity and and what's important you know it's it's people you know it's how our well-being impacts others well-being and it's not being you know you don't have to do it in a grand scale but there is an, a specialty that each of us have that's extremely unique if we just tap into that little bit of specialty or gift per se and understand and want to learn how that's supposed to be connected to others, we'll figure it out. And it's one that I think is the most powerful thing when you do make that connect and understand exactly why everyone matters. Yeah. I don't know if I answered your question or not. <laughs> you did, because ultimately, if there's a food desert, which do you mind describing what a food desert is for anyone who may not have heard of a food desert? Yeah, so food deserts essentially are places where people cannot source healthy food within, technically within their locale, the, their location, their immediate surrounding, where you're having to go extensive miles or you're not able to easy, easily acquire or source fresh food. And that's what food deserts are. And a lot of times food deserts are uh, mostly in black and brown communities. And, you know, that's very telling in terms of how productive we can be a as a, a society if we're only looking at parts that are isolated from food deserts. You know, it's still part of the grand scheme of what we all should be concerned about. You know, that's our mission to understand and make sure that we do our part. If there is something that we could do, how do we make change? That's going to ultimately affect all of us. Yeah. And when we tie that back to what we were talking about in the beginning, which is when you have good nutrition, you feel better. When you feel better, you think better. When you think better, you make better choices. And so when we don't provide good nutrition to any area, then we're pulling the rug out of the opportunity. And it chokes me up every time. We are pulling the rug out from underneath these people and we are giving them no choice and no chance to have that opportunity. And that affects all of us. It affects all of us. And it's not, it's not fair, point blank. And so if we can do something about it, like create hydroponic systems where they can be in those areas where there's a food desert and we can just share, then why would we not? Why would we not empower people to be healthier and then feel better so that they can make the choices that all the rest of us have the opportunity to make that are not located in a food desert? It just makes sense. It does. It, it really does. It, it makes a lot of sense. So again, hats off to you for that. And then we go into the chemical spill, right? And so here are these people who are in this area where there was a chemical spill. And we think, oh, it's only affecting that group of people. But from your view, is it only affecting that group of people? Not at all. Not at all. And what's scary about that is things like this happen and we don't know who it affects until years later down the road when something happens. And, you know, that chemical spill that was 
in that river that fed into a larger river, which fed into a larger lake in multiple states and other places, the people that, you know, are growing gardens using that water, it's endless. And that's the scary part about it. We don't know who all it's affecting. And, you know, fortunate or hopefully it doesn't, it's not as serious as we, we don't want it to be serious, but we won't know. It's just one of those things we don't know. So things like that matter. It really matters and it affects all of us. And so by knowing that we can take proactive measures to clean our water source a little bit more than maybe what we would otherwise. And so when I listened to your podcast, that's what I took away from it. Not to be angry at the fact there was an accident. There was an accident. We can't go back and change the fact that there was an accident. But what we can do now is be mindful of the fact that there was an accident and then make choices to be more clean with our water, do something different knowing that the accident occurred. And so... And the people that it will potentially impact. Let's prioritize people. Let's prioritize humanity. Let's prioritize those things that matter much more than other stuff. And to your point, let's add more clean water. Let's make sure it's clean and not just within that community, but potentially where it could have spread to. Let's make sure we're doing anything and everything we could to prevent issues or accidents in the future to happen that's going to impact people. We, that's where we don't want things to happen. Yeah, I love every ounce of that. Now, I've mentioned your podcast a couple times because I've listened to them all and they're just riddled with tons of fantastic information. So can you tell us the name of the podcast and the type of content that you share? Absolutely. Absolutely. So the name is Grow with Greg. And we don't just talk about food and gardening and hydroponics, although I could do that all day. I try to have meaningful guests and people that can share information that I wouldn't necessarily have, but something that is beneficial to others. You know, I, I get a kick out of that, Amber. I, I love the guests that I have on my show, and hopefully you can come on one day and can share your story. But these are the things that connect us all. And sometimes I get lost in a podcast just asking questions, wanting to know more about people because everybody has an amazing story that I promise you somebody can get something from that can help them personally. I agree. Very, very interesting. And they can find that on your website but they can also find it on anywhere they find podcasts like this one, right? That's right. Anywhere you podcast, uh, Grow It Greg, our podcast is on all of those outlets. If you're interested in some of the things that we talk about, you can definitely find us on any and everywhere you podcast. Awesome. Now, for someone who is highly intimidated by gardening and they're just like, all right, I've heard you, you're talking about how this can make my life easier, but, you know, I got those self-watering plants before, that didn't work, I still brown-thumbed it and killed them out, I've done all of these foo-foo gardening things, and I still managed to kill every tomato plant I attempt to grow. What advice can you give them and how would what you're creating outside of the fact that you send them plants that are already well nurtured? How would this be different than any other approach? And what advice can you give them to help them feel a little more empowered? That's a good question. The, the simple advice I would give, and this I'll start outside of my product and then I'll come back to our product. If you want to grow your own or have some control over how you grow and what you grow, I always encourage people start small, super small, very, very small, not a lot of plant varieties. Understand it's it's not a quick thing, but it is something that you learn. And over time, 
you'll start to feel more successful. Will you have those failures? Absolutely. That's life. We all we all do. You know, we pick ourselves up and go at it again. Uh, but if you're not interested in that, and I'll move to our product now, that's what we do for you. We ensure that you feel successful. You could be a black, brown, any other thumb but green. And this system is designed for it to work because we want you not only to feel successful, we want you to be part of this lifestyle change. And that transformation is extremely powerful and it spreads. So the more that we can impact your life, your family's life, the children, the kids, it's amazing to see kids and how they engage with the roadblock. You know, that's education all within itself. So if we can do more of that and share more of that knowledge we have, that's what I'm about. Right. You've talked about education a few times. Do you have educational courses that people can take if they feel like they have a multicolored thumb? Like maybe I can grow one kind of plant, <laughs> but I can't grow another. So I would love to learn how to do it. We're, we're putting one together for kids in the classroom, okay. uh, a, a STEM a curriculum we are doing that otherwise for adults the best way my edu i don't have a formal classroom but again amber i love to talk about this stuff <laughs> so if there are questions i will answer them all day long I tr trust me i will that's phenomenal yeah i started out having like the worst luck with plants and what i found out was the more i just got to know the plant that I was connecting with, the easier it was to grow it. It's not like every plant is the same, just like not every person is the same. And when I came at them all like they were, then I had no success. But Sorry. when I got to know them, know which one liked sun, which one didn't like sun, which one, it, you know, it's just like people, you have to listen. Oh, you beat me to it. I was going to say that's the correlation. And it's a beautiful correlation to our human relationship. You know, take one at a time, understand, learn, grow. And not only do you grow, but that other person or that plant, if you will, on the other side grows too. And it's a beautiful relationship. Yeah. So is it true or have you found it to be true that if you talk to your plants it actually helps them grow there's some truth to that okay. and the reason <laughs> the reason that is is the exchange of oxygen and carbon di dioxide okay so there's yeah. a scientific reason to it you can google it there is some truth to that for sure absolutely and it just makes you feel better. <laughs> I like it. So the next time somebody looks at me like I'm crazy for talking to my plants, I can say we're sharing oxygen and carbon dioxide. <laughs> That's right. That's right. In That's my exactly own right. way. And it looks a little <laughs> less crazy than me going. <laughs> That's it. That's right. That's, That's exactly right. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And ultimately i think there is something about just the sheer like from my side i'm a conscious being and i feel like the plant is too in its own way and so like it really does create a connection i feel more connected to the plant at least so i'm more apt to go and care for it where if yeah. i don't do that i'm probably not as likely to go and check on it and see how it's doing that's right that's exactly right. So yeah. Do yeah. You have other tips like that where because if it's in a in a case in the corner, I'm walking by it all the time. And so it makes it easier to see it so it's front of mind. But I also know people who if it's right there, then sometimes you forget about it. Does the system require that you've created require a lot of attention or is it pretty much you don't need to do much and it takes care of itself. What's the balance there? So there, there is requirement, but the only requirement is adding water every four or five days and every two weeks add the nutrients that we supply you with. 
other than that, the system operates within itself. But you do want to engage with your plants. You want to learn and see how they grow. The additional maintenance, if there is any, every three months, I recommend that you just clean out your reservoir. You're going to collect some some leaves that may fall into it, some extra roots that are growing around it. It's a simple process to clean out. We truly have designed this unit to be easy and very simple. And that was with intention. I was waiting for a plane to go over. I don't know why. We have a loud jet right now. I absolutely cannot wait. I am looking into ordering my very own system. Do you ship them across the country? We do. We do. We we ship them all across the country. Uh, we haven't gone into any other uh, outside of the U.S. right now. But as we scale and grow, be looking out for that to come soon. Good. So when I get mine and I get it all set up, I will take photos and videos and share them out so that everyone can see how I'm doing with mine. I'm very excited to get started with that. Now, as far as any other advice, just in general, for someone who wants to understand how to just connect with gardening as a whole, whether it's hydroponic, or it's starting their own gardening bed, because this is something you've done throughout your lifetime. It sounds like you've just been a gardener in your soul from a very early age. If there are individuals who feel like it's a calling, but they don't even know, like, what do I do to start? Do I get a simple planting bed? Do I actually have to go out and dig up my yard? If I'm in the city, what can I do? Do you have any like first steps that you would recommend for someone? I do. The most easy and simple way to start is a container garden or a flower pot. Start with one plant. Start with one plant. Engage with that plant. Read about that plant. Uh, the easiest plants are, you know, lettuce. Uh, some herbs are very easy. But don't overwhelm yourself. You know, I, I tell my kids small successes. Everything in life is about small successes. But when you've got a bunch of those, you build on them. And now you've built this masterful whatever, but it doesn't start big. They always start small. And the purpose behind that, if your listeners can understand, the real reason behind it is to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success beyond that first foundation. Establish the foundation and then build upon that. And that would be my advice to your listeners. Please start small, start easy, plant and dirt is cheap. Get a container, a pot, start with an easy plant to grow something and talk to your local gardener, whether that's you know commercial at a big box store, or your local, you know, garden center in your community, talk to them, ask them for something easy. What can I do and start off easy? One plant, not not an entire garden, just one plant. And I guarantee you the success that you'll feel from that will encourage you to want to do more. I think that's incredible advice because I did not follow that. And <laughs> it was overwhelming to say the least. So yes. My final question before I begin to wrap us up here is if you do start out with that one small plant or you do what I did, which, is the, which was the exact opposite and you overwhelm yourself and you start getting little infestations because that's what happened to me. I had my indoor garden and I had all of these plants and I was so excited because they were all popping up out of there and they looked so good. And then all of these gnats and aphids and all of these little critters were like, ha, huh, meal time. <laughs> yeah. What would you recommend for that? <laughs> You're not going to 100% rid yourselves of any pests. And that's even if you grow inside 
it's less inside, it's more outside. There are some organic uh, sprays and household sprays that you can use and just make very simple mixtures of dish detergent and cooking oil and baking soda. You know, we have that information on our website. It's not harmful to humans, to pets, to animals, to babies or kids. And that that works. It works with, you know, spraying for pets. But you have to start early. If you see the aphids, which they're everywhere, the white flies are everywhere. If you see them start to form, that's when you attack the issue then. Don't wait until the infestation where you, it's already overtaking your plant. Uh, start early and you can manage it a lot better. Such great advice. Because I think to me, at least, that was the most disheartening part was I get so excited because there they were and then there they weren't because <laughs> this pest just took them out. It happens to us all. It's happened to me. It still happens. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get disheartened. It's just going to happen. No, it is going to happen. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, as we're wrapping up here, with you being such a strong heart leader, being willing to transition out of a very successful career because your heart was just so connected to people and you really wanted to be in service of others. I would love to know when you hear a term like heart leader and you know that we and our community just see you as the strong heart leader, what does that invoke in you? What does the term mean for you? That's a pretty strong question, uh, Amber. I think when you when you talk about heart leader, for me, let me see if I can unpack this. Yeah, you know, things of the heart, those are the things that you guard or things that matter the most. And to be a heart leader, that's caring for what matters to you most. Me personally, it's it's my family, it's people, it's my community, it's giving back in some kind of way that's going to benefit or help. And I personally found that being a heart leader in that capacity, what you get in return is more than what you could ever imagine. It's more than and it's it's satisfying. It's satisfying in a way that sometimes it's hard to describe when you see you've helped someone else and the benefit that they receive from you helping it. And it's not a lot of times it's nothing big. And I think we live in a world today that we need more people to care. You know, we need more people to be concerned about each other and slow down. We're in such a fast paced society and world that being heart leaders just means care a little bit more. You know, it doesn't have to be in a major way, but the benefit you receive from that, I promise you and your listeners, if you do that, there's a change that happens to you some kind of way. It's amazing to me. Well, thank you for being such an amazing heart leader and helping us look at things like food deserts and how to share food with our, our neighbors, our families but most of all, how to nourish ourselves so that we have the capacity to even do that. Because as you say so clearly, we have to be nourished. And we have to be strong so that we can do that in the first place. So gotcha. really appreciate all that you're putting out there so that people can understand how to do that. And again, I want to make certain as we wrap up, how can people get a hold of you? Where is everywhere they can find you from website to social media to podcast where can they learn about you and what you're doing so our website is produced for all and that's spelled out no numbers uh, that's our website all of our uh, social media handles all of our you can find us uh, instagram facebook TikTok. i think we're even on pinterest at produce for all our podcast is Grow With Greg. We we have some amazing people, and I can't wait for you to come on, Amber. But yeah, that's where we're found. And we love to, if you like what we're sharing, let us know. Or if you have some suggestions on things that you love for us to share more with, let us know that too. That's that's what 
our entire mission is about. That's why we're here. That's what we want to do. That's what we enjoy doing. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to this getting out to everyone so that they can start hitting you up and learning more about how they can even start to address food insecurity in their own area and not let their food be more well-traveled than they are. (laughs) That's all right. Thanks so much for having me, Amber. I really appreciate it. It was great chatting with you. You too. And thank you, amazing Sweet Vera community, for tuning in to another episode of the Heart Leader Podcast, where heart and mind align. I'm your host, Amber. Don't forget this entire month is about transparency, where we'll talk about everything from transparency in food to transparency within. And as always, we have our free resource, the Transparency Journal. All you have to do is pop over to social media and send us a message and we will get that right over to you. Check out the information below to not only find out everywhere you can find Greg, but how you can get that resource too. Until next time, I look forward to seeing you in the Suivera community.